Okay, so I have to do some soldering, um, and I booted up the um, the soldering station that I had repaired. At least I thought I had repaired, and it um, it wasn't uh, wasn't setting temperature. And I'll show you what I mean in a sec. Now I should probably unplug this before I do any futzing around with with wires and stuff. So what's supposed to happen is when you turn the soldering iron on the this potentiometer is is being read by the microcontroller and it is the microcontroller is creating a set point for a pid control loop that adjusts the temperature of your soldering iron pid proportional integrate integral derivative um, control loop um, that sets a, that um, adjusts measure, well, let me back up. The thermocouple in the soldering iron produces a voltage, and that's how the microcontroller will um, determine what temperature your, your soldering iron is set at. What this potentiometer does is it produces a, um, is used as a voltage divider, and it creates a voltage that the microcontroller reads, and that voltage is used as a um, as a proxy for your desired temperature. So, for example, five volts is five hundred degrees C, and zero volts is um, one hundred and eighty degrees C. At least that's what's supposed to happen. So you should be able, so this display toggles between the current temperature of your of your um, soldering iron, and then if there is a change to the um, to the to the voltage that is being read by the microcontroller based on a change to the resistance or the voltage divider that this this um, this potentiometer is pr producing, then the display will toggle to um, setting your temperature. And there's some hysteresis there, so it'll it'll stay there even though you haven't uh, moved it for a few a few seconds or maybe a second, and then it'll go back to whatever the temperature of your soldering iron is. So what was happening was I was getting intermittent, um, it started out intermittent, where it would intermittently not register my, um, my, uh, my readings on my um, set point. So see here, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to adjust it, but nothing's adjusting. Oh, wait. Yeah. See, there we go. Even though I'm moving it back and forth, it's not changing temperature. But if I wiggle it, I can get it to move. So I think that there is a problem with this potentiometer. And so having swapped it back and forth a number of times, I finally put in a, a new pot. And yes, it turns out that when I put in a new potentiometer, um, a 10K, it actually does what you expect it to do. And I'll show you that. Okay, so that pen's not connected. I've got the new um, new uh, pot in here, and now it adjusts as per before. So now I can adjust the temperature to 480, down to 180, and then it behaves appropriately. So, yeah. 
I'm going to turn that off because I haven't got a calibrator or anything like that. But oh my goodness gracious, the amount of time it took me to debug that was absolutely astonishing. And um, I had to um, do a whole pile of desoldering um, and soldering in things because I went down all kinds of rabbit holes that I should have just um, stopped um, and had a break at a certain point. But somehow you just get... Um, caught up in doing something and you just can't seem to stop anyways that's that's the way it is for me and um but finally i got to the point where i realized that yep it was that potentiometer there's something wrong with this thing um maybe i'll i'll open it up to see what is uh, wrong with it because i don't know where i can find a replacement that looks quite like this um i I haven't seen one that is panel mounted or that is board mounted and then also panel mounted at the same time. So the replacement that I have, um, two things, has a different um, uh, diameter here. So it's going to be a little loose in the mounting hole, but um, I think I'll be able to accommodate that with just some a washer and maybe some sort of a, a shim of some sort. Um, just 3D print. Um, a small shim um, that should be pretty easy and um, easy to do and um, and yeah uh, but oh the thing that got me about the the troubleshooting this problem is I got my mind fixated on what the problem used to be or the problem that I discovered with the display if you remember the display had a problem because there was um, the the board is um, doesn't have plate, didn't have some plated through holes, and there was some missing connect connectivity um, going to this display. So I was looking for more of that problem, and I couldn't find it. I would um, I soldered this um, this pot down to the board because I thought that there was something um, wrong with it not being grounded. Um, basically, at a certain point, I was so tired that I was just making guesses, and I did not remember the number one rule in troubleshooting. And that is, once you start making guesses, it's time to stop what you're doing, take a break, and then come back to the problem later. Because that, once you go down that path of starting to make guesses and just changing things on a whim, you are just in for a world of non-productive time with your troubleshooting. The best troubleshooting happens when you're methodical and you have a hypothesis and you're testing it and you know that your hypothesis, your, your test is going to either confirm or disprove a hypothesis. And I forgot completely that rule of um, troubleshooting. But anyways, um, live and learn. So now I have to figure out um, how to um, jury rig the pot onto the front here and then come up with some connectivity between the potentiometer and the board that is reasonable reasonably secure um, until I can find a direct replacement for this and uh, yeah that's what's next oh and is this thing really worth it well yeah you know it's like 150 bucks worth of gear so I don't want to just do what the other person did and just throw it in the dumpster Okay, conveniently enough, it's 2.54 millimeter um, pin spacing on potentiometer, those potentiometer holes, um, which is not too surprising, uh, 0.1 inch. So we can use some sort of a pin header like that and a indexed um, connector so that we get orientations correct so that clockwise is high, counterclockwise is low, as long as we, uh, as long as we get that all done correctly. We just have to pull two of these alternating pins out, and then that'll fit nicely onto there. Um, and that's on the back side of the board. And then <clears throat> we'll just get a cable um, harness for this guy to mount um, onto the board and there should be plenty of clearance because 
Oh, well, there will be just enough clearance. Um, I wonder if I should... Is there anything that's going to short out on? Might not be a bad idea. Huh, I wonder if those can fold over. They're not long enough. But they could... But they could... Oh, sorry. Can't see. How long are these? Yeah, they'll just barely reach. <clears throat> See, what I'm trying to figure out is how do I pr provide some physical um, some physical uh, some strain relief against moving these guys when this guy moves. Because this guy was not moving because it had these two um, solder tabs. And that is just clamped onto the back, isn't it? I could probably just glue that onto the back of this. And with that, yeah, it's six of one half a dozen of the other because the, the board on this one's on the top, the board of this one's on the bottom. Um, <clears throat> Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do just that. Or something similar. The only difference is that these are longer uh, leads, and I would have to extend those. That would totally be the easiest. Extend those down with some standoffs. Well, let's try it. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if just using cryocyanate glue would be sufficient bond strength to keep that on there. Hmm. Might be. Cyanoacrylate. Ah! Okay, let's pop this guy off. I wonder how heat um, sensitive or lack thereof CY is. Well, we'll find out. I think it can melt it, to be perfectly honest. So um, it might just be fold the tabs over kind of thing. And I'm not, yeah, that shouldn't get it too hot. But what I will need to do <clears throat> so actually, I might not even need these headers. If I just glue pin head or solder pin headers in here, then I can solder to the 
to the vertical part of the pin header. Yeah, there we go. Now, the only issue is going to be that I have much less throw on this thing than I did on this thing, but I don't think that's going to make much of a difference. Oh, or I could use this pot, which is a 10K pot, which has the correct length arm. Ah. But I just glued that one on there. Oh, well, this one will work just as well. Yeah, that one will work just as well. Okay, headers, clean the board, solder this side, then we're good. Cyanoacrylate cures in the presence of carbon, so surprisingly enough, blowing on them helps to cure them. So that's a pretty rude hack, I have to say, but we'll see if it works. Okay, says pin, says off, 180, 480, yay. Yay, it's working, it's working. Hallelujah. Oh, so much better. Okay. Now, let's button her up and then we can get to calibrating.